Looking for a movie that's packed with action and intrigue? Look no further than The Getaway. This 1972 film, directed by Sam Peckinpah, follows the story of a recently released ex-con named Doc McCoy and his wife as they attempt to pull off a high-stakes heist. But things quickly spiral out of control, leading to a thrilling game of cat and mouse with the authorities. But that's not all, stay tuned, because there are plenty of funny, shocking, and sad facts about the getaway that you won't want to miss. Out of the many roles in this movie, which one was your favorite? We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Share your most cherished memory or personal experience related to this film, we're all ears. So grab your popcorn and settle in, because you're in for a wild ride with The Getaway. The Getaway is a remarkable movie that highlights the teamwork between director Sam Peckinpah and actor Steve McQueen. Peckinpah's skill in showing violence in a creative way is clear in the film, making the action scenes more meaningful. McQueen's performance as Carter Doc McCoy, a criminal caught up in a failed robbery, is captivating and strong, holding the story together well. The plot follows Doc and his wife Carol as they deal with the fallout of the botched robbery, running from the police, and angry criminals. Even though they're not always good people, the audience can't help but root for them, especially compared to the worst characters they encounter. The other actors also do a great job, particularly Ollie McGraw as Carol and Ben Johnson as the corrupt parole board chief, Jack Bainon. Al Lettery's role as the relentless pursuer, Rue D. Butler, adds tension and danger to the story. Peckinpah's direction is excellent in creating a tough, morally complicated world where characters often act out of self-interest. The movie keeps you on the edge of your seat with a satisfying ending. In summary, The Getaway is a gripping crime drama that shows off Peckinpah's directing skills and McQueen's magnetic presence on screen. It's a movie that keeps you hooked from beginning to end. The Getaway, a film from 1972, features notable behind-the-scenes anecdotes. Steve McQueen proposed the scene where his character shoots and blows up a squad car. Director Francis Ford Coppola highlighted Al Lettery's performance, stating it enhanced Al Pacino's acting in The Godfather. Lettery's fluency in Sicilian added depth to a pivotal scene. Sam Peckinpah initially wanted Stella Stevens for a role, but Robert Evans, an executive, cast Ali McGraw instead. This decision led to McGraw divorcing Evans and marrying McQueen, sparking controversy. These insights offer a glimpse into the creative dynamics of the production. In the getaway, when he met Martin Landau, he recalled their previous encounter, mentioning Landau was once on the back of James Dean's motorcycle at a New York City garage where he worked. Steve McQueen, who starred in the film, declined roles in Dirty Harry and The French Connection because he didn't want to do more cop movies after Bullet. The movie's original score by Jerry Fielding got replaced with a jazzier one by Quincy Jones at McQueen's insistence, which didn't sit well with director Sam Peckinpah. He expressed his discontent through a full-page ad in Daily Variety. In one scene of The Getaway, a stuntman stood in for Bo Hopkins' character, performing a role from a car. As the police cars arrived, an extra lay on the pavement to depict Hopkins' character after being shot. In 1973, the Rolling Stones mentioned Steve McQueen in their song Star Star from the album Goat's Head Soup. McQueen, reportedly amused, personally permitted the reference. The lyrics included Ali McGraw's name alongside McQueen's, referring to their relationship. During World War II, McQueen joined the U.S. Army Air Force. He initially mentioned his rodeo experience to a recruiter who misheard it as radio. Consequently, McQueen served as a radio operator during the war. A budget conflict arose during the making of The Getaway. David Foster faced a 30-day deadline to secure a new deal with another studio. Paramount would gain exclusive rights otherwise. Fortunately, he received numerous offers and opted for one from First Artist Group. In this deal, Steve McQueen would earn 10% of the film's gross receipts instead of an upfront salary, potentially yielding high profits if the movie succeeded. During an appearance on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson, McQueen showcased his musical talent by playing the xylophone with six mallets simultaneously. Sam Peckinpah, the director, and McQueen occasionally engaged in heated arguments during filming. Higginpa recalled one such incident when McQueen threw a bottle of champagne at him during a disagreement. Despite the tension, McQueen found the situation amusing. The getaway was filmed mostly in sequence, a rarity in filmmaking. Under his contract with First Artists, Steve McQueen had final cut on the film, which upset Sam Peckinpah when he found out. 
According to Richard Bright, McQueen selected takes that made him look good, which Pekinpa felt played it safe. McQueen's choices leaned towards what Bright called playboy shots of himself. Stanley Kubrick initially wanted Slim Pickens for the role of Dick Halloran in The Shining. However, Pickens declined, citing his experience with Kubrick's demanding style during Doctor Strange Love. As a result, the role went to Scatman Crothers. The Getaway, a 1972 film, had its share of interesting behind-the-scenes details. Originally, the cast was set to include Ernest Borgnine. However, circumstances led to changes in the lineup. In 1973, Steve McQueen traveled to England for discussions with Oliver Reed about a potential collaboration. Reed, known for his country mansion, broom hall, and eccentricities, took McQueen to his favorite London nightclub. The night turned memorable as Reed, after an evening of heavy drinking, unexpectedly vomited on McQueen's shirt and trousers. The incident required McQueen to endure the rest of the night with the lingering scent of Reed's sickness. A lesser-known fact about a cast member involves Ollie McGraw. After appearing in just three films, McGraw had her footprints, an autograph engraved at Grauman's Chinese Theater in December 1972. These off-screen incidents provide glimpses into the dynamics surrounding the making of The Getaway, offering a peek behind the curtain of the 1972 film. Steve McQueen, alongside his publicist David W. Foster, sought to produce films. Their first attempt was alongside Paul Newman and Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid. However, 20th Century Fox didn't want Foster involved. The plan fell apart. Later, while McQueen worked on Le Mans, Foster acquired the rights to the getaway novel. He urged McQueen to consider it. McQueen was drawn to the protagonist's shades of good and bad. Initially, the getaway was to be directed by Peter Bogdanovich, starring his girlfriend Sybil Shepard. However, Warner Brothers offered Bogdanovich, what's up, Doc? He wanted to do both, but the studio declined. McQueen, upset by the situation, opted for a different director. Interestingly, the famous car chase in What's Up, Doc? is a parody of McQueen's chase in Bullet. McQueen was approached to star in Earthquake alongside Paul Newman, but had committed to the towering Inferno. In one part of the getaway, Steve McQueen suddenly hits Ali McGraw while they're outside the car. This wasn't planned, so McGraw's reaction was real, making the scene more intense. McQueen and James Coburn acted together in three earlier movies, The Magnificent Seven, Hell is for Heroes, and The Great Escape. This shows how well they worked together over time. The band Drive by Truckers made a song called Steve McQueen on their album, Gangsta Billy, to honor McQueen. This shows that McQueen's influence goes beyond acting. The Getaway, a movie from 1972, is really important in movie history. There's an actor in it who said God bless you in his last movie, The Hunter. He was also in two movies with Marlon Brando, The Godfather, and The Night of the Following Day. People really loved this actor. In October 1997, he was ranked 30th in Empire Magazine's list of the best movie stars ever. People still love his movies, and he's remembered for inspiring filmmakers and audiences. This actor's work continues to be celebrated and remembered, showing how much he still matters.